Hey folks, this is Ben from Road to VR, back with another episode of Inside VR Des- Oh, actually, that's Inside XR Design. While we're relaunching this series, we're also broadening its context so we can talk about the growing field of AR and VR under one umbrella. But anyway, today we're going to talk about Red Matter 2, an adventure puzzle game set in a retro future sci-fi world. This game is full of great VR design, but those paying close attention will know that some of its innovations were actually pioneered all the way back in 2018 with the release of the original Red Matter. But hey, that's why we're making this video series. There's incredible VR design out there that everyone can learn from. Today, we're going to look at Red Matter 2's ingenious grabber tools and the surprising number of ways that they contribute to immersion. At first glance, the grabber tools in Red Matter 2 might just look like sci-fi set dressing, but there's so much more than that. At a basic level, the grabber tools take on the shape of the user's controller. If you're playing on Quest, Index, or PSVR 2, you'll see a custom grabber tool that matches the shape of your specific controller. So first and foremost, this means that the in-game hand pose the players see matches their actual hand pose and the feeling of holding something in their hands. The shape you see in-game even matches the center of gravity as you feel it in your hand. Compare that to most VR games, which show an open hand pose and nothing in your hand by default. That creates a disconnect between what you see in VR and what you actually feel in your hand. And of course, because you're holding a tool that looks just like your controller, you can look down and see all the buttons and what they do. I don't know about you, but I've been using VR for years now, and I still couldn't reliably tell you off the top of my head which button is the Y button on a controller. Is it the left one, the right one, top, bottom? I do not know. Take your own guess. Tell me if you got it right in the comments. Uh, maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm an idiot. Anyway. Being able to look down and reference the buttons and which ones your finger is touching at any given moment means players can always get an instant reminder of the controls without breaking immersion by opening a game menu or peeking out of their headset to see which button is where. This is what's called a diegetic interface. That's an interface that's contextualized within the game world instead of some kind of floating text box that isn't actually supposed to exist as part of the game's narrative. In fact, you'll notice that there is absolutely no on-screen interface in the footage you see here from Red Matter 2. And that's not because I had access to some kind of special debug mode for filming, it's by design. When I spoke with Red Matter 2 game director Norman Shar, he told me, quote, I personally detest UI, quite passionately in fact. In my mind, the best UI is no UI at all. Shar also told me that a goal of Red Matter 2 is to keep the player immersed at all times. So it's not surprising that we also see the grabber tools used as a literal interface within the game, allowing you to physically connect to terminals to gather information. To the player, this feels like a believable way that someone would interact with the game's world. Under the surface, we're actually just looking at a clever and immersive way of replacing the press X to interact mechanics that are common in flat games. The game's grabber tools do even more for immersion than just replicate the feel of a controller in your hand or acting as a diegetic interface in the game. Crucially, they also replicate the limited interaction fidelity that players have in VR. So let me break this down. In most VR games, when you look at your hands, you see a human hand. That hand, of course, is supposed to represent your hand. But there's a big disconnect between what your real hands are capable of and what the virtual hands can do. Your real hands each have five fingers and can dexterously manipulate objects in ways that even today's most advanced robots have trouble doing. So while your real hand has five fingers, your virtual hand essentially only has one point of input, a single point with which to grab objects. If you think about it, the grabber tool in Red Matter 2 exactly represents this single point of input to the player. Diegetically, it's obvious upon looking at the tool that you can't manipulate your fingers, so your only option is to grab at one point. That's a long way of saying that the grabber tools in Red Matter 2 reflect the coarse hand input that's actually available to us in VR, instead of showing us a virtual hand with lots of fingers that we can't actually use. So, in Red Matter 2, the grabber tools contextualize the inability to use our fingers. 
The result is that instead of feeling silly when we have to rotate and manipulate objects in somewhat strange ways in VR, you actually feel like you're learning how to deftly operate these futuristic tools. Believe it or not, we still haven't covered everything that makes these grabber tools great VR design. Speaking of VR design, give me one minute, literally like 60 seconds, to thank our sponsor for making this episode possible. And trust me, this is cool. Shapes XR is a design tool that's built for the very thing we're talking about, making great VR design. Using your hands to interact with the virtual world in interesting ways is one of the key things that makes VR immersive. It's like the entire game of Red Matter 2. But designing these interactions is a challenge because even prototyping and talking about how they should work is hard when you're working with flat screens and traditional 3D tools. Shapes XR is a powerful spatial design tool specifically made to solve this problem by letting designers and developers build and prototype interactions and interfaces inside of VR without writing any code. For a puzzle game like Red Matter 2, Shapes XR showed me how you could quickly prototype a puzzle idea like this one, where players match symbols on a rotating wheel, then pull a lever to unlock a door. Using the stages function, you can even create simple slideshows to show how the prototype should function in practice, keeping everyone on the same page. And maybe the best part about Shapes XR, it's free. If you want to start prototyping in VR today, you can find the URL in the video description below, or just scan this UR code and you'll be taken straight to the download page in your MetaQuest app. How cool is that? Okay, back to it. There's still more to talk about why Red Matter 2's grabber tools are so freaking smart. Physics interactions are a huge part of the game, and the grabber tools, again, work to maintain immersion while handling objects. Like many VR games, Red Matter 2 uses an inertia-like system to imply the weight of an object in your hand. Small objects move quickly and easily while large objects are sluggish and they fight against your movement. While we would normally imagine the forces that we would feel when moving these virtual objects, the grabber tools create a sort of immersion insulation gap by providing a mechanical pivot point between the tool and the object. This visually explains why we can't feel the forces of the object against our fingers, especially when the object is heavy. The disconnect between the object and our hand, with the grabber tool as the insulator in the middle, alleviates some of that expectation of the forces we'd normally feel, thereby preserving immersion just a little bit more. And if it wasn't clear already, the grabber tools are actually your inventory. Not only do they store all of your tools, like the flashlight, the hacking tool, and the gun, you can even use them to temporarily stow objects. Handling inventory this way means players can never accidentally drop or lose their tools, which is an issue we see in lots of other VR games, even those that use holsters. Last but not least, the grabber tools can actually do some interesting things that our hands can't. For example, the rotating grabber actually makes the motion of turning wheels like this one easier than doing it with two normal hands. It's no coincidence that the design of the grabber tools in Red Matter 2 is so smartly thought through. After all, the game is all about interacting with the virtual world around you, so it makes sense that the main way in which players are going to touch and feel the world would be really carefully considered. To take full advantage of the grabbers, the developers built a wide variety of detailed objects for the game which are consistently interactive. You can pick up pretty much anything that looks like you should be able to. And here's a great little detail that I love to see. In cases where things aren't interactive, all you have to do is not imply that they are. Here in Red Matter 2, the developers simply removed the handles from this cabinet, a clear but non-intrusive way to tell players it can't be opened. It is much better to simply understand you can't interact with something than to try and fail. That is an immersion breaker. And somewhat uniquely to VR, just seeing cool stuff up close, like it's right in front of you, can be a really cool, rewarding experience. To that end, Red Matter 2 makes a conscious effort to sprinkle in a handful of visually interesting objects, whether it's this resin eyeball, papers with reactive physics, 
or this incredible scene where you watch your weapon form from hundreds of little balls right in your hand. The grabber tools in Red Matter 2 are so beneficial to the game's overall immersion that honestly, I'm surprised we haven't seen this become more common in other VR games. If you want to check all this out for yourself, you can find Red Matter 2 on Quest, PSVR 2, and SteamVR. There's links in the description to get you there fast. And real quick, one more thing. If you're still watching, I assume you're really into this stuff like we are. We really want to keep making this video series, and we want to make it the best that we can. So we put together a short two-minute survey just to get some feedback about what you did or didn't like about this episode to try to make the future ones even better. So it would be awesome if you wouldn't mind just filling that out real quick. Here's the QR code or find the link in the description. Thank you for that. And thank you for watching. If you're still here, how about dropping us a comment to let us know what game or app you think we should cover next. And while you're at it, a thumbs up on this video really helps us out. And it wouldn't be YouTube if we didn't ask you to smash that subscribe button and ring the bell to make sure you don't miss new episodes. 